Let's talk about restrictions to international trade. The objective of this section is to discuss the restrictions nations place on international trade, the objectives of these restrictions, and their results. Specialization and international trade can result in the efficient production of want-satisfying goods and services on a worldwide basis. Yet, the nations of the world continue to erect barriers to free trade. Perhaps the most commonly applied trade restriction is the customs or import duty. An import duty or tariff is a tax that is levied on a particular foreign product entering a country. This tax has the effect of raising the price of the product in the importing nation. Revenue tariffs are imposed to generate income for the government. Protective tariffs are imposed to protect domestic industry from foreign competition. Dumping is the exportation of large quantities of a product at a price lower than that of the same product in the home market. Thus, dumping drives down the price of the domestic item. A non-tariff barrier is a non-tax measure imposed by a government to favor domestic over foreign suppliers. Types of non-tariff barriers are as follows. An import quota is a limit on the amount of a particular good that may be imported into a country during a given period of time. An embargo is a complete halt to trading with a particular nation or in a particular product. The embargo is used most often as a political weapon. A foreign exchange control is a restriction on the amount of a particular foreign currency that can be purchased or sold. This has the effect of limiting imports from the country whose foreign exchange is being controlled. Currency devaluation is the reduction of the value of a nation's currency relative to the currencies of other countries. Devaluation increases the cost of foreign goods, while it decreases the cost of domestic goods to foreign firms. Bureaucratic red tape, such as product testing and labeling, can be one of the most frustrating trade barriers of all. Cultural barriers can impede acceptance of products in foreign countries. When customers are unfamiliar with particular products from another country, their perceptions about the country might affect their attitude toward the product and help to determine whether they will buy them. Reasons for restricting trade include the following. To equalize a nation's balance of payments, to protect new or weak industries, to protect national security, to protect the health of citizens, to retaliate for another nation's trade restrictions, to protect domestic jobs. However, protecting these jobs can be expensive. Trade restrictions have immediate and long-term economic consequences, both within the restricting nation and in world trade patterns. These include the following, higher prices for consumers, restriction of consumers' choices, misallocation of international resources,